Good morning and thank you for joining us. I'm Spencer Tillis and I'm Trayvon Miles and this is the Delmarva Sports Insider. In this week's episode, Snow Hill was looking to snap their losing skid, but could the Eagles get it done when they took on the Colonels? And a field hockey championship was on the line. Later, we'll have highlights of the Bayside Championship game between the Pokemon Warriors and the Kent Island Buccaneers. And DSU was in search of their first conference win, but how far did they go in the game against the Pirates? Stick around to find out. But first, there was a huge matchup in Lewis. Spencer, what do you think about that? Huge matchup You're going on. You're definitely right about that. Six and one Sussex Tech made the trip east to take on undefeated Cape Henlopen. So a school official told me that Cape, they were expecting upwards of 6,000 people and we would hear one name all night. Kanai Kane, the big man there, rumbling down the sideline for a big pickup and Tech was driving until they got a little fancy and Jason Weberg was there for the catch. He plays for Cape. That would end the drive, but the only bright spot, that was the only bright spot for Cape as the night belonged to number seven, Kanai Kane. There with the five yard touchdown, Tech led 28 to nothing at halftime. Later on, again, you cannot stop the train. Kane in from 14 yards out. This kid had not one, not two, not three, six <laughs> touchdowns on the day. He absolutely oh took over the game, Spencer, and Tech wins the showdown 49 to 13. Wow, I can honestly say I was not expecting this. Even though I did pick Tech to win this game, I did not see them winning the way they did. Total domination. Cape Henloping was Cape Henloping was shell shot from the opening kickoff. Was the moment too big for for Cape uh, Spencer? I don't know, man. It, it, maybe it was their schedule coming in. I mean, they really hadn't played too many mm -hmm. good teams going into this. But I was dumbfounded by what we <laughs> saw out there. I mean, mm -hmm. that home crowd was fired up, expecting to see a showdown. And they just did not get one. I mean, the Ravens ran over them. How about this coming in this game? They had given up only 49, or they gave up 49 points in that game. They were averaging only giving up 10 points a game going into that. On top of that, they gave up seven rushing touchdowns in that game. Mm. That's more than what they gave up the entire season mm. leading up to that. That mm. is unbelievable how bad that defense looked. And coming in, they were one of the best defenses in the entire North. I can't figure that one out, but I mean, props to Sussex Tech. They total, looked amazing. Total domination in that, game. in that game. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Well, we had a match of a couple six and one teams on Friday when Easton played host to Kent Island. A low scoring first half here. Burt bangs this one through from 25 yards out. That gave the Bucks a three to nothing lead at that point, and Kent Island was looking for a little bit more just a little bit later. Zach Goldrich here able to barrel his way in from three yards out. They missed the point after, so it made it nine to nothing at that point. The Warriors just tried to get something going right here. They get their first points of the game. Chris Duchel connects on this 28 yard field goal, but that would be the only points that they would get on the day as the Bucks D absolutely clamped down. They get a huge win, 21 to three. And again, another score, another game that I was just <laughs> shocked by. We had some shockers uh -huh. this week. The thing that really impressed me there was that Bucks defense was unreal coming into this. I mean, here are some numbers that you got to know. Coming into this game, the Warriors were averaging 37.8 points per game. They scored three in this game. That The defense, I don't know how you were able to slow it down. They have so many weapons for the Warriors, and they held them all in check. They weren't able to do anything the entire night. Didn't get in the end zone once. I mean, that is a heck of a job not right so there. Not so fast, my friend. Do not give the Buccaneers credit because you have been crowning the Eastern Warriors all year. So you this. know I'm not going to let you get off that easy. You've been screaming for Easton, East, 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 and Jalen Money. He completely got shut down by the Kent Island Buccaneers. Easton has only beat one team over 500, and that was a Kent County team with a number of injuries. Things are not looking good in Easton right now. I'll tell you, Spencer, they're just not looking good right now. We'll get to your Indians later. That's fine. <laughs> well, when, we, when you get into the season this late, you start to see some familiar conference foes, including the ones you don't like, your bitter rivals. And there's not a better rivalry on the shore than Laurel and Del Mar. Packed house in Numbar Stadium, and the Bulldogs were out for blood coming off of a loss. Laurel already up 7-0 when Del Mar quarterback Shane Leatherberry, just so smooth that guy he is, is to he sneak is. it in from one yard out. Game tied at 7. Bulldogs, though, would strike back. Reggie Green, continuing his monster season, takes a sweep off the left and breaks a couple tackles for a 20-yard game. Same drive now, and Laurel quarterback Alan Lubinicki drops a bomb to Jared Johnson. Johnson does, does the rest for 31-yard hookup. Delmar would outscore, oh, Laurel, excuse me, would outscore Delmar 20-6 in the second half to take this one, 34-13. 
Man, what, what a game. What do you think about that, Spencer? I've I'm been telling hurt. you all, all little... year. I've been telling you all year. What a game for Laurel. I know Coach Phillips had this one circled on his calendar. I'm definitely sure he did. Chucky August with 275 yards rushing in the game. Laurel as a team went for 338 yards. How about them? Their only two losses this year come to two undefeated teams. They are continuing to impress people with this season. Yeah, you're absolutely right about that. I mean, they did look good for me. You know, Delmar, they got fired up for this game. Clearly, mm -hmm. it is a rivalry game, and they hung tough. But there's just not enough horses down the stretch for them. I mean, they wore down. They, that second team, it's such a drop-off. And you've seen that so many times with the Wildcats this year. Well, they'll be close in a game, and then you come that second half, that third, fourth quarter, and you just don't have the guys up front anymore. You just wear down. And it was a tough loss for them. I mean, clearly they wanted this one, but, you know, they're going to have to wait another year to get, bring back that trophy. Delmar played very tough in the game. I'm, I'm going to give them credit. They did play very tough, and it kind of got away from them at the end. You're right about that. Well, we had another rivalry game right here in Salisbury Friday night when Y High hosted Parkside. The Rams were already up 7-0 at this point and looking for a little more. Dejour Diggs gets to the outside, takes that one in from a couple yards out, and he is fired up about it. The <laughs> Indians' defense was trying to provide just any kind of spark right here. Mellon Morris gets into the backfield and brings down Devin Redding for the sack right there. He'll eat it up a little bit, playing a little on the defense right there, but Redding, he'd come right back. Delivers a beautiful pass right here to Malcolm Downing from 14 yards out. Great concentration, too, to bring that one back in. Indians offense just struggled all night. Coach Riley here even picking him off, right? <laughs> nice catch hand. He's still got the hands right there, Coach. Nicely that done. Later. Rams take that one 42-20, to 20, and wasn't this... Wasn't that one of your teams? Yeah. Just, I, I just picked, check it out. I, I picked Wild High. I picked Wild High in the game. Uh, they obviously did not come out to play at all. You're absolutely right about that. Well, <laughs> the thing is, I can't figure either of these ball clubs out right now. I mean, the Rams lose some head scratchers, and then they just look dominant the last couple of weeks. Why High, the same thing. I don't want to gamble on any team right now. <laughs> I just don't know what to expect. You don't know what you're going to get, not even just game to game, but series to series. This team is so inconsistent. You, you definitely don't know what you're going to get, but props to Parkside. They played an incredible game. You know, their their backs were on the line for the city championship. And what a way to go. You know, they they just totally took Wahai out of it. Wahai had seven turnovers in the game. Mm. Seven. When you put have seven turnovers, you're not you're not gonna win a game. I don't care how good you are, how many athletes you have in the backfield, you are not gonna win a win a football game with seven turnovers. Yeah, that is just way too many. So it's just <laughs> not gonna work for it's them. It's right not there. gonna work at all. But of course that was just what we think. We want to know what you think. Find us on Twitter at 47ABC Sports and let us know your popular and unpopular opinions. All are wanted and all are needed so we can discuss them right here on, right here on Delmarva Sports Insider. You are absolutely right about that. Well, we're going to take our first commercial break, but do not go anywhere because we are still talking high school football. Clippers and Seahawks in a shootout. That's next. My name is Tony Hayward Jr. from James and Bennett running back, and you're watching Delmarva Sports Insider. Welcome back. We are still talking high school football, and we had a shootout that no one saw coming yesterday when Bennett hosted Stephen Decatur. Clippers jumped out to an early lead here, and Jacob Larimore finds Barry Gaines out of the flat. A nice stiff arm there. He gets the edge, and he is gone. 70 yards to the house, and then it was the Seahawks' turns. Justin Meekins with a beautiful pump fake. The corner bites, and that's all he would need right there. R.J. Heyman right here, 32 yards, and the score. A little ball flip to end it. But it was too much Bennett down the stretch. Trayshawn White right here busts one off the right side, and he is gone. 65 yards to the house. Clippers take a wild one, 55-41 to 41 the final. And Snow Hill is taking on Colonel Richardson here early on. Ian Smith breaks this one off and takes it all the way to the house. 87 yards later, and that's good for the touchdown. That gave the Eagles a 19-0 lead, but back come the Colonels. A.J. Palmer this time gets it on a reverse, and he'll take it in from 35 yards out. That made it a 10-point game, and we had a ball game. But Smith was just too much in this one. Another long run down the stretch right here. It would move the change. He finished with over 300 yards on the night, and he just carried his team to a 24 to 20 win. Now those, of course, were just a few of our ball games. Trey, what happened with our other ones? Thanks, Spencer. So many games going on, and of course, we have our scoreboard to tell you exactly who went, who who won the, these games. Queen Anne's with a 21 to 20 victory over North Carolina. Kent County with a 43-12 win over Washington High. And, of course, we can't forget Cambridge. 
they take a 49 to 20 victory against Delaney. And on to our next scoreboard, Lake Forest defeated Archmere, a very, very good win, 35. Welcome back. We are still talking high school football and we had a shootout that no one saw coming yesterday when Bennett hosted Stephen Decatur. The Clippers jumped out to an early lead here when Jacob Larimore finds Barry Gaines in the flat. A nice stiff arm there. He gets the edge and he is gone. 70 yards to the house, but then the Seahawks come right back. Justin Meekins with a pump fake right here. The corner bites and then he connects with his man RJ Heyman. 32 yards, a little ball flip to end it right there, but it was just too much Bennett down the stretch. Treshawn Wright busts this one off the right side. That's good for 65 yards and the score. The Clippers take a wild one, 55 to 41. And Snow Hill was taking on Colonel Richardson here early on. Ian Smith breaks this one off. That's good for 87 yards later. He is in for the touchdown. The Eagles up 19-0 at that point, but back come the Colonels. A.J. Palmer this time gets it on reverse, and he'll take it in from 35 yards out. All of a sudden, we are in a 10-point ball game. But it was just too much Smith down the stretch in this one. Another long run after this. He just kept moving the change, eating up yards. He finished with over 300 yards on the night as the Eagles pull out a win, 24 to 20, the final. Now, of course, those were just part of the games that we had on the dockets. Trey, tell us about the other ones. That's right, Spencer. So many games going on and some scores you definitely have to see. Queen Anne squeaking out a tough one against North, a tough North Carolina team. 21 to 20. How about those Kent County Trojans? They put up 43 on Washington as they cruised to victory. Delaney held Cambridge under the 70 that they gave up to the Vikings last year, but CSD with a rather easy road win. They dropped the Lions 49 to 20. Caesar Rodney was thinking upset, but they would go on to lose a heartbreaker as they give up a touchdown late in the game in Wilmington to the Spartans 38 to 35. And Lake Forest, the mighty Spartans remain undefeated. An impressive victory as they take down Archmere 35 to 14. Woodbridge struggles. I'm still scratching my head about that one, but they win. They beat a great, Mil a good Milford team 20 to 12. Sussex Central had their way with Polytech. The Golden Knights took the win 56 to 21. And finally, Dover gets their first win of the season since September the 5th. They take down Smyrna 41 to 22. Indian River had a running clock going pretty early as they took out Seifert 49 to nothing. Well, week eight was another memorable one for high school football. Hard to believe there are only two regular season games remaining until the playoffs. Let's take a look at my top five power rankings in Maryland. How about some love for those Kent County Trojans? The Trojans have won four straight and are finally healthy for the first time this year. Finding themselves, they find themselves at number five. Easton, your team, Spencer, is falling fast. Their second loss in three games after starting 5-0. They still have yet to play Queen Anne's and Cambridge, so look out for that. Queen Anne's and Cambridge and Ken Island come on at 3-2-1, all, all with wins this weekend. And in Delaware, oh boy, do we have some changes here. Woodbridge gets the random five spot this week. Really don't know who should be in that spot, but I have not forgotten about the Bulldogs. Laurel with a big win over rival Delmar. They check in at four. Sussex Tech jumps Cape after they absolutely annihilated the previously undefeated Vikings and still standing. Lake Forest Spartans, they finally see our top spot. Spencer, I do not want to hear it this week. Please tell me that they are all right. I'll give you all the Maryland ones, all right, at least in my book. But I got some questions with that Delaware, what's going on there. I mean, for starters, the top spot, personally, I have Sussex Tech. I mean, the road win was the most impressive win that anyone's have. I get it, Lake's undefeated. But still, I mean, you go to Cape, you handle them the way that they did. I think they deserve the top spot, but I'm not going to really fight you too much there. And that last spot, Woodbridge, I mean, they barely squeaked by. I still think Indian River deserves to be there, but uh, it's kind of a picker one right there as well. Well, let's take it to the college level. DSU was back to work yesterday when they hosted Hampton. Defense was the story early on in this one. Dan Zula gets in the backfield here, brings down the Pirates quarterback for a big time loss right there and the sack. But Hampton would come right back. A huge hole here, 51 yards later. They're all the way down to the three. And then the play after that, they would punch it in off the right side or the left side that is for the touchdown as soon as you Track it in, and there is the score right there. The offense, non-existent for the Hornets in this one. Marley Kelly gets picked off here. The reason being he is actually on their roster as a wideout. I don't know why they haven't been a quarterback. Well, probably because Gilbert Rivera struggled as well. They brought him in. It made no difference. DSU gets shut out 23 to nothing in the final. As for the other, other college teams, Wesley as well. Wesley's a Division I team just beating up on D3 teams at this point. They break a school record by defeating Lynchburg 
75 to 12. As for SU, the Seagulls, they take a bad loss to a not very good Ithaca team, 32 to 7. That one's definitely going to hurt the goals down the stretch, and they really couldn't afford to lose that one. All right, we're going to go ahead and take another quick commercial break, but coming up, it was championship week here as Stephen Decatur squared off against Queen Anne's, and wait till you see how this one finished. This is James McCormick, head football coach, North Carolina Bulldogs. You're watching Delmarva Sports Insider. Welcome back. Well, it was championship week here for a lot of our teams, including some of the soccer ones, and we had a great matchup as Stephen Decatur was taking on Queen Anne's here Monday night. The Seahawks were up a goal with under three minutes to play in regulation, but Leah Wills able to change that in a hurry. She ties things up and we would head to overtime, and there just a minute in, this would happen. Lexi Van Kirk on a throw and finds Jillian Petito. That would be the tie goal right there. They, she would hit the game winner. Seahawks take this thing 5-4 in overtime. It was not a warm day by any means in Pocomoke, but they were out in for, full force. They loved their field hockey, and why not? Already up 1-0 when Kent Island's Peyton Beach beat the keeper and tied this game up at 1. Late, late, late into the game, the Warriors' Danny Batsy fires one that finds the back of the cage, and it is a party in Worcester County. Pocomoke wins the Bayside Championship 2-1. to one. And it was the Bayside Championship between Parkside and Easton, and just a few minutes into this one, the Warriors take the lead here after Ro Ronald Rosola right here on the near post finds the back of the net for the goal. The Rams trying to hang around in defensive plays like this definitely helped out. An awesome save right there from Justin Ball, but this one was all Easton. Roy Keel this time from the top of the box, and that is good. Warriors repeat as Bayside champs, 4-0 the final. The Eastern Shore Independent Athletic League Championship going down in Salisbury between Salisbury Christian and Worcester Prep. Ryan Spaden of Salisbury Christian puts that one in from close for the Jags. They were fired up. Minutes later, though, Nally, Owen Nally, excuse me, bends it like Beckham. Their celebration would be short-lived, though, as Salisbury Christian added two goals late, takes the conference championship 3-1. And playoffs begin this week for a lot of our teams, including Parkside Field Hockey, which hosted Queen Anne's. Lions on the attack this time, and Sarah Walford with a shot, but Keela Beaver does a great job of cleaning up the mess right there in front of the cage. And then just a minute before halftime, Parkside able to tie this thing up. Morgan McAllister on a penalty stroke. That's good. They would head to overtime where the Rams eventually took that thing 2-1 to one the final. And the Lady Warriors of Easton had to wait 45 minutes after St. Michael's bus broke down on the way to the game. But when the Saints got there, they got defensive. Meredith Camper with a great denial for St. Michael's. Scoreless early on. Later on, off the corner, Alex Trago would settle the pass and blast an absolute fireball. Past the keeper, the Warriors would take this one 5 to nothing the final. And Washington was taking on Chris Field early on this week. Corner for the Jags winds up with Nicole Thornton, but a nice save there from a Naomi Barnes keeps it out. Back the other way we go, and this time Ariel Johnson with a shot, but Mackenzie McIntyre also playing a little defense right there. Under 10 to play, and Washington would put this thing away. Thornton this time finds the back of the cage. The Jags take it 2-0 the final. Bennett Field Hockey hosting Northeast in the 3 8 First round, Clippers trying to get in the act early. Keegan Marsh with a shot, and that would go just right of the goal. Later, though, Bennett would keep trying, and Marsh would find a teammate in the circle. But what a save by Casey Ross of Northeast. Bennett not going anywhere, though, continuing to attack, and it would pay off. Kayla Wells would get this one to go as Bennett would advance 2 to nothing. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, it was a family affair when Mary Washington visited Salisbury Field Hockey. Are you confused? I know. Don't stick around. We'll be right back. This is Caitlin Patterson from Pokemon Field Hockey, and you're watching Delmarva Sports Insider. Welcome back. Well, there was a huge field hockey showdown yesterday as top-ranked SU hosted 16th-ranked Mary Washington. And while both teams had everything in the world to play for, since the winner took the regular season conference crown, it meant a little something extra to just to take a look. Field hockey, a sport where teamwork prevails and a sisterhood-type relationship is built. For senior Mallory Elliott, that bond will never be more true than this weekend when her sister Lindsay will be in attendance, coaching Mary Washington. Wait, what? It was definitely a little weird, and I don't know, it's so weird 
playing her. But how could this happen? I mean, Lindsay was a two-time All-American at SU and even an assistant coach there for four years. Once we're on the field, it's game time, and unfortunately we kind of have to separate those two things um, so that either she can get the job done or I can get the job done. The line in the sand was drawn, a family divided by the very thing that they loved, and a rift that even their parents were caught in. They've made shirts that say, Go Elias, and there's... Salisbury on one side and an eagle on the other side from Mary Washington. They are torn, I think, but I'm going with this year that they're 100% ready for Mallory. <laughs> with Saturday's showdown looming, they know what's at stake. Not just a conference regular season title, but something much more valuable. Bragging rights. One of us is going to be a sore loser. We'll talk about it, rub it in their face. Not, But at the end of the day, we're still sisters and we'll get over it. <laughs> And the game definitely lived up to expectations. There was Coach Elliott looking on as her sister Mallory was out on the field. SU jumped out to a quick lead in this one. Kareen Sandio right here able to find the back of the cage just 10 minutes in. And then three minutes later, they would double that lead after this corner finds Summer Washburn. That shot gets deflected in by Courtney Yancer right there. And now they're up 2-0. And let's go ahead and make it 3-0. Washburn with an absolute rocket from the top of the box. That's good. And it looked like SU was on their way to a route. But the Eagles come back tied at the end of regulation. We would head to extras and there this happened. Samantha Johnson gets it back off the corner, takes her time and the perfect spot for the game winner right there. SU takes this one 6-5 the final. Coach always tells me that like I rushed my shot and then I was like, all right, I'm going to take my time. And then I still didn't get off a really good shot, but it went in. So I was real excited. Well, what a game. All right, we're going to go and take our final quick commercial break, but do not go anywhere because on the other side, it is the best minute in sports, the top plays of the week. That's coming up next. This is Matthew Robinson, wide receiver at Wicomico High School, and you're watching Delmarva Sports Insider. Welcome back, folks. So many great plays made all over Delmarva, but we have narrowed it down to the best. Let's jump into our plays of the week. The first play of the week comes from Mr. Ian Smith. Let's do that one first. Let's um, do that one first. Is it, is it in the right way? It should be. I mean, if it's not, it? then. 
Welcome back, folks. So many great plays made all over Delmarva, but we have narrowed it down to just the best. Let's jump into our plays of the week. The first play of the week comes from Mr. Ian Smith of Snow Hill. He took the handoff at the 15-yard line, broke a tackle, and you do the math. 85 yards later, he is in for a touchdown. So what does he do for an encore? Oh, nothing. Just goes another 50 yards Dear for Lord. another touchdown score. 19 carries, 300-plus yards on the day for Smith. He put the team on his back. Yeah, no kidding. Well, the, my play comes from the championship game here. Decatur taking on uh, Queen Anne's. And check this out, Jillian Petito finished with four goals, none bigger than that one. That gave them the Bayside Championship crown right there. And how about this little fact? It was also her birthday wow. right there. Four goals, her birthday, and a game winner in overtime. That is not a bad day in the office at all. <laughs> definitely not a bad day. And speaking of not a bad day, check this out. Wahai's quarterback, Jason Patterson, drops back for the pass. And look <laughs> who he finds. Parkside head coach Brendan Riley with the hands. I believe the quote was, I'm just out here making plays. I mean, wasn't that what he I'm said? I'm just an athlete. <laughs> coach <laughs> Riley was an old lineman at SU when I was in high school, so very impressive. I have a feeling that this is not as impressive as the next one. Still got the hands up right there, too. Yep. Well, how about Kanai Kane? This guy is a walking wow. highlight reel right here. He finished with six not touchdowns one. against Cape. Not two. An absolute beast. And then look not at this three. right here, the home crowd absolutely eats this guy up. He is an absolute monster. He needs to get ready for a serious division one and that's coming down the road. <laughs> and don't forget, you can find us out on the field all week long. We got a bunch of big games that we're going to be at this week. It's the Hennel Open Volleyball Championship game Monday as Delmar will be taking on Smyrna and it's the Volleyball Championship here in the Bay side as well. Bennett will be taking on North Carolina in that one. And we got a great football matchup this week and Queen Anne's will be hosting Easton. But that's all the time we got for you this week. Be sure to keep it right here. Ravens Wrap is coming up right after this. In the meantime, in between time, do not forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter at 47ABC Sports. Also, be sure to get all your highlights from 47ABC.com. Have a great day. Thanks for tuning in.